one of the things we really wanted was we wanted the model to be able to edit code for us. Uh, that was kind of a wish, and we had m- multiple attempts at it before before we had a sort of a good model that could edit code for you. Uh, then after after we had a good model, I think there there have been a lot of effort to you know make the inference fast for you know uh, having having a good good experience, and uh, we've been starting to incorporate. I mean, Michael sort of mentioned this like ability to jump to different places. And that jump to different places, I think, came from a feeling of, you know, once you once you accept an edit, um, it was like, man, it should be just really obvious where to go next. It's like it's like I I'd made this change. The model should just know that like the next place to go to is like eighteen lines down. Like uh, if you're if you're a whim user, you could press one eight jj or whatever. But like, why why even why am I doing this? Like the model the model should just know it. And then so so the idea was you know, you just press tab it would go eighteen lines down and then make it show you show you the next edit and you would press tab so it was just you as long as you could keep pressing tab and so the internal competition was how many tabs can we make someone press once you have like the idea uh, more more uh, sort of abstractly the the thing to think about is sort of like once how many how how are the edits sort of zero zero entropy so once you've sort of expressed your intent and the edit is there's no like new bits of information to finish your thought, but you still have to type some characters to like make the computer understand what you're actually thinking, then maybe the model should just sort of read your mind and and all the zero entropy bits should just be like tabbed away. Yeah. That, that, was, that was sort of the there, abstract there, There's this interesting thing where if you look at language model loss on, on different domains, um, I believe the bits per byte, which is kind of character normalized loss for code, is lower than language, which means in general, there are a lot of tokens in code that are super predictable, a lot of characters that are super predictable. Um, and this is, I think, even magnified when you're not just trying to autocomplete code, but predicting what the user is going to do next in their editing of existing code. And so, you know, the goal of cursor tab is let's eliminate all the low entropy actions you take inside of the editor. When the intent is effectively determined, let's just jump you forward in time, skip you forward. Well, well, what's the intuition and what's the technical details of how to do next cursor prediction? How the, the, that jump, that's not that's not so intuitive, I think, to people. Yeah, I think I can speak to a few of the details on how, how to make these things work. They're incredibly low latency, so you need to train small models on this, on this task. Um, in particular, they're incredibly pre-fill token hungry. What that means is they have these really, really long prompts where they see a lot of your code. And they're not actually generating that many tokens. And so the perfect fit for that is using a sparse model, meaning an MOE model. Um, so that was kind of one, one, break th- one break that we made that substantially improved its performance at longer context. The other being um, a variant of speculative decoding that we, we kind of built out called speculative edits. Um, these are two, I think, important pieces of what make it quite high quality um, and very fast. Okay, so MOE, mixture of experts... The input is huge. The output is small. Yeah. Okay. So, like, what, what, what else can you say about how to make is like, caching play a role? In oh, this caching. Particular? Caching plays a huge role mm-hmm. um, because you're dealing with this many input tokens. If every single keystroke that you're typing in a given line, you had to rerun the model on all of those tokens passed in, you're just going to one significantly degrade latency. Two, you're going to kill your GPUs with load. So you need to you you need to design the actual prompts used for the model such that they're cache caching aware. And then yeah, you need you need to reuse the KV cache across requests just so that you're just spending less work, less compute. Uh, again, what are the things that tab is supposed to be able to do kind of in the near term? Just to like sort of linger on that. Generate code, like fill empty space, also edit code across multiple lines. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then jump to different locations inside mm-hmm. the same file. Yeah, and then like hopefully launch. jump to different files also. So if you make an edit in one file, and maybe maybe you have to go maybe you have to go to another file to finish your thought. It should it should go to the second file also. Yeah, and, and then the full, the, the full generalization is like mm-hmm. next next action prediction. Like sometimes you need to run a command in the terminal, and it should be able to suggest the command based on the code that you wrote too, um, or sometimes. You actually need to 
like it suggests something, but you you it's hard for you to know if it's correct because you ne actually need some more information to learn. Like you need to know the type to be able to verify that it's correct. And so maybe it should actually take you to a place that's like the definition of something and then take you back so that you have all the requisite knowledge to be able to accept the next completion. So providing the human the knowledge. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you integrate, like, I just uh, gotten to know a guy named Prime Gen, who I believe has an SS, you can order, order coffee via SSH. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, we, we did that. We did that. Uh, so can that also the model do that? Like, <laughs> feed you and like, yeah. <laughs> and provide you with caffeine? Okay, so that's the general framework. Yeah, then yeah. and the, the magic moment would be if... It is, programming is this weird discipline where um, sometimes the next five minutes, not always, but sometimes the next five minutes of what you're going to do is actually predictable from the stuff you've done recently. And so can you get to a world where that next five minutes either happens by you disengaging and it taking you through, or maybe a little bit more of just you seeing next step what it's going to do. And you're like, okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. And you can just sort of tap, tap, tap through these big changes. 